all, I, I feel the need to um, comment on uh, your previous conversations. As a PhD chemist, space scientist, um, God particle is way blown out of proportion. All it is is a, a particle called boson that supposedly gives uh, other elements mass, and that's it. Um, it's no proof that God exists, and oh, so it, I was right. Yeah. Oh, okay. You're you're fine. Keep going. <laughs> um, I thought you were calling to correct me. No, no, no. no. Um, also, about the, the whole Big Bang theory, it definitely is not something out of nothing. Um, I mean, you can have proof of how mass and energy intertwine by looking at our sun. That's the driving force of our sun. Um, mass is converted into energy, and therefore, if you use common sense, you can see how energy can be turned into mass. But um, that's either here or there. I just felt. Or if you eat a donut, you can see how right. energy can turn into mass. <laughs> exactly. Um, I like to keep it, you know, Homer Simpson level when I'm dealing with my science. <laughs> well, <Ooh>. yeah. <laughs> but um, one of the reasons why I was calling, uh, I grew up in the Bible Belt, and um, while I had great parents who were not overly religious or did not, um, you know, brain, uh, I hate to say it, but kind of brainwash into religion, I did grow up in a religious area um, where the churches basically ruled the area. Uh, if the churches did not want something in the area, they ran it out. And I am forced to deal with a lot of these people when I go home. And it's very hard for me as someone who doesn't believe in religion, who doesn't believe in God, uh, and how do you deal with these people who are so... Uh, for lack of a better term, brainwashed, that, I mean, they can become quite hostile. And how, how do you deal with people like that? Your turn. I haven't had a lot of family issues. Really? Yeah, you've had more of the family fun. Um, boy, I wish Beth was here. Sweetie, call in when the, when the line's open. Maybe you can address Julie's comment. Uh, my, my experience has been a bit different than... It hasn't been as bad as others. Um, clearly, I had family members who were disappointed, and there was a, this incredibly long period of adjustment where there was quite a bit of preaching and wailing and gnashing of teeth going on. Um, I also live quite a distance from them, so only being able to see them perhaps once a year for a short time, um, we'd all much rather have fun and enjoy our time together then get into arguments and discussions. What I did to kind of quell this, and it's, this won't work for everybody, but my family uh, are among those who believe that there is a God who loves me and wants me to know that he exists, and they also believe that God answers prayer. And so I simply said, you should pray that God would reveal himself to me because none of your arguments and preaching are going to have any effect. It is evidence. If your God exists, clearly he can demonstrate himself to me in a sufficient manner. You, you believe that he can and that he wants to, and yet he has not. So why aren't you adhering to God's plan? Because clearly if he wanted to, he'd have done it already. And instead, why don't you pray that God would reveal himself to me? And that is the tact they took because they're, they're ill-equipped to, to have the sort of uh, apologetics arguments and philosophical discussions, um, and th they've quietly admitted with, on this subject, they're closed-minded. God exists. He, he's the author of the Bible, the creator of the world. He's the one that loves them, et cetera. Um, he exists real. No amount of argument, evidence, discussion, whatever will ever change their mind. And my response is, if that's the case, then I have no interest in discussing this because I don't want to argue with people who are closed-minded, who aren't in, you know, concerned at all with evidence. So why don't we set all this aside? You keep on praying till the day you die, 
And when we're together, why don't we just enjoy each other's company and have fun and have a good meal and go out in the yard, you know, throw the ball around, do stuff like that. Um, I, I, the way I portrayed that story, I just realized, kind of makes me look as like the, like uh, the mediator who settled everything. That's not the case. Um, the, the idea for them to pray rather than preach um, was mine, and, and but the the adjustment to a new sense of normality was all of us, um, and it works. I I love my parents. They love me. We get along. I didn't get to go up for Christmas. I really miss them. Uh, we don't fight and argue, but that's not the case in every family. Um, I have close friends who are going through much more difficult times. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, you might call in next week and ask the same question. Yeah, <laughs> you, might, you might think about that. Okay. Call, call in next week, but there's, yeah. no, there's no easy answer and every family's different. Well, my, my parents were always very um, open about that kind of thing. They just felt that, the, that in the area that we were in that we should be exposed to that. But, I never was worried about my parents um, thinking a certain way about me, but, you know, sister, brother-in-law, friends, um, they're all pretty shocked. And I, I, like I said, I was religious when I was younger, but as I got older and more educated and really started questioning things and really delving into what or why or any of that, that's when my ideas changed. and. I don't think that they're quite uh, comfortable with that. Yeah, and they probably won't be. And you have to acknowledge that um, you're the one who changed and that if that ends up costing you friends or family, that that's just the, the price of it and that that part is on their head. Yes, you changed, but if they were truly friends and family who were loving and accepting of you as you were, uh, irrespective of your beliefs, um, then you could maintain those relationships. And where those relationships are strained, yes, you were the impetus for the change, but the response that they have to you, that is their responsibility. Mm -hmm. It is probably, uh, it, where, where it is exceptionally negative, negative, it is probably a direct result of the strong religious indoctrination. The, the type of religious belief that says anybody that's signif significantly different from me is scary and evil. Oh, yeah. well, yeah, we were taught that other religions were cults and uh, all that. It was, it's they really are. scary. And I mean, so was yours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're all somebody's cult. Yeah. Well, we're that's all... true. All right, well, thank you. I appreciate it. Great. Thanks, thanks a lot. Me.